So now we cut to, again, footage we have seen before, a couple of clips, but there is there is some new clips in here of Fadratha. Okay, so the next line, right after the Emperor said, send assassins, I believe it's Princess Irulan saying, Fadratha, he's psychotic. So that's from, again, another conversation. I do, and I do wonder who she's talking to. It could be the Reverend Mother Gaius, Helen Mohayam, not sure, but there's definitely some missing context there. <laughs> Lovely fade. This is new. So this is right before the arena battle. Just beautiful design here of his dual blades. I always get this mixed up every time. I think white, white for poison, black for purity? <laughs> or is it the other way around? But you know why it confuses me? Because he switched them. He switched them. Anyways, so you never know where the poison is. Uh, you never know what which uh, blade is poisoned in Fade's hand. That's the point. But I don't think it's... <laughs> the white one because of what he does later in the scene, <laughs> which is that. <laughs> I don't think it's that one. Was that the white blade? Yeah, that was the white blade. What did y'all think of this moment? I didn't expect it, but it was very snake-like, it seemed. Just very psychotic vibes right on cue for what Princess Irland said. So I remember Villeneuve saying that Austin Butler's Fade Roth is like a psychotic Mick Jagger. I believe. <laughs> also, what was interesting about this is, I guess there's this whole ceremony of him preparing, and it looks like there's a paint, like a ceremonial paint on his chest. We also, again, see more uh, paint on his back here. It's very interesting where how they decided to, to put the ceremonial paint on him. She probably was in charge of doing that. <laughs> the one who has now been dispatched. It happens so fast too. I definitely get some David Lynch vibes from this scene, from uh, this costume here on the left. Definitely Lynch vibes and definitely they did want to amp up. Wiseman told he's like psychotic. So they definitely demonstrated that as well in this scene. This was really cool. I love this shot. We see the full arena here. We've seen snippets of it. Again, the scale of it is amazing. Very interesting in the design, the shape of the arena itself. This this movie only cost $122 million. I think I just want to reiterate that. <laughs> Look at what we've seen so far. $120 million. $40 million less than the previous film. And they didn't use a, a single set from the first one. All new sets. And it looks to me all, all new costumes. And again, just all filmed in IMAX too. So very evil looking. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to describe it. Very cold and menacing at the same time. Money well spent. Here we have a uh, homage to the sci-fi miniseries as well with the funky hats. <laughs> yeah, the, the very interesting. They look, I don't know what, what I'm looking at with these uh, background characters. Very strange, very alien-esque. Okay, but that's another shot. They did show other scenes from that we've seen before in previous trailers of him and the Atreides uh, captive fighting. And this is just one, this is a clearer shot that I could find. So yes, rest in peace, Lieutenant Landfill. I did think it was interesting that they showed so much of the fight, this uh, gladiatorial fight. I mean, we basically know what's going to happen. Not, so that's, I mean, it's fine for those who, if you've read it. Although I do say that even though many of us already are very familiar with the story, I am finding myself surprised by many things and... Again, when you're presenting the story in a visual manner, part of the world building is to incorporate elements visually that convey the story that can be covered in a, in a dense novel uh, quite well. But to compact that in a less than three hour movie, and it takes so much time and effort and knowledge and skill to be able to translate this dense mythology into such a, a shortened manner, but also, again, visually. So they have to convey things in a way that convey multiple things, like what they were doing with Fadrotha earlier, his cold calculating psychotic but, uh, manner, but also hopefully later they will. I did like that one scene where it was just, or that one picture of him and he just looks very, I don't know, like there's a lot going on in his head. He's calculating in there. He's ambitious himself and there's more depth to his character than one might think just uh, if you're not familiar with the books. He's more than just, uh, you know, a, a, a rival to Paul Atreides. He's got his own plans. He's a, a cog himself in, the, in this grand design. 
for the Bene Gesserit. And he's trying to do what he can to serve his own interests, and that's not necessarily the Baron. So there's a lot, a, a lot in there. And I look forward to seeing more of that. There's going to be some epic fight scenes, definitely. So I don't think we have to worry about that. <laughs> But as far as the more nuanced, the, the deeper layers, because in the in the book, we could hear what was going on in Fade Roth's head. We could read it. And there was a lot in there prior to this scene, this arena fight. And that really gives you such insight into his character. How are they going to convey that in a way that you know, we obviously they're not going to show his inner dialogue. So they have to convey these things in other ways. So we'll see.